I'll be showing my top 18 tips and tricks for OneNote Class Notebook. I'm a product manager on the Microsoft Education team, and I've been building Class Notebooks for the last six years. I'm so hardcore about OneNote that I even wear a OneNote cape. And when I go outside, I'm always sure to wear my OneNote mask. And I even wrote a song about my one and only OneNote. So let's get started. The first tip is importing existing content into your new class notebook in Teams. So I'm going to create a team really fast and I'll just speed this up. Class team. Okay, my team is ready, my science class. I'm going to click on the class notebook tab and click set up a OneNote class notebook. Now instead of blank, choose from existing notebook content and click next here. Now this is the place where I can choose existing content from other notebooks and pull them into my new notebook. First off, I'll click add content for the content library. And I got some existing notebooks. Maybe here's an older science notebook. Here's some good stuff I wanna pull in. Choose done. And maybe I'm gonna add one more notebook. Down here, my master curriculum notebook. This is a regular OneNote notebook. And here's some other things that I want. And click done. You can even populate the teacher only section. So I'll click here and select an old science notebook. And here we go, old lesson plans. So this is gonna pull this content in. I click next. And we'll just leave this as the default set of sections and click create. It's getting my notebook ready. Okay, my class notebook is set up. We'll make that full screen. And if you go into here, what you're gonna see is all that content is in the content library. Here's those Japanese tree frogs, that old content. And here's the teacher only section, my old lesson plans. The second tip is the ability to lock the collaboration space. So the collaboration space is where everyone can do read and write at the same time. Right here, not everyone wants the collaboration space open at once. Teacher might wanna lock it. So if I go to class notebook tab here and click manage notebooks, I go into the manage class notebook settings and right here is lock collaboration space. I will say lock it and now close. Now any student that goes into this collaboration space will not be able to edit because I've locked it. If I wanna unlock it, I go back into manage notebook and unlock the switch. The third tip is having a paraeducator join this class notebook to be able to help with a specific student. We had the Bellevue School District do this tip early on with the class notebook. So what that means is I'm gonna go into my team. So I'll go to the dot, dot, dot menu, click add member, choose teachers and add a name, add in Megan. Now Megan has access to this class notebook. Why this is important, whether it's remote learning or not remote learning, there's a need for certain students to have a paraeducator. That is someone who is assisting the teacher, maybe for a student who has special needs or needs extra assistance. Because Megan is now part of this class notebook, let's say Megan is working with Alex. Megan has access to see everything Alex is doing. Megan can give extra feedback. Megan does not have to be next to Alex as a paraeducator. This is a great scenario that really harnesses the power of the class notebooks in a more inclusive environment. So add that co-teacher. The fourth tip is when in Teams, always maximize your class notebook. For example, if you expand the notebook here, this is really cramped. Always maximize like this. This is for students or for teachers, keep it maximized and have more space. The fifth tip is making sure your class notebook toolbar is turned on. I'm here in OneNote for Windows 10, but this also applies to OneNote for Mac and iPad. If you have the web version of OneNote, the toolbar is already there if you're in a class notebook. And for the desktop, there's an add-in link is in the description. I'm gonna go to the dot, dot, dot menu and choose settings. Then I'll choose options and scroll down and you will see class notebook tools. Make sure that is on, and then we'll go back here, and then it just appears. So now there's the class notebook toolbar. The next few tips are about distributing content in your class notebook. So let's go to the content library in Japanese tree frog, and let's choose a page here. The sixth tip is distributing to individuals or groups. So on the class notebook toolbar, choose distribute page and individual distribution. I wanna take this page from the content library and distribute it just to Alex and Ella and I can choose next and then choose their section and choose distribute. I won't do it right now, but it's really easy to choose individuals just like you saw here. I'm gonna close. Now we'll go to distribute page and group distribution. Let's say I wanna create a group of my audio learners. I can give it a name and choose a couple of students, Ella and James and click save. And these are now my audio learners. I'll click the back button and you can see this group has been created. I could create another group advanced students, that's Alex and Rosie, and click save. And I can always add more here. I could click edit, 
and add more students later, but you get the idea. Now I can distribute a page, let's say to my audio learners like this, and maybe I wanna add some audio feedback to this page that only goes to them. Click here, choose insert, audio. Here's my extra audio feedback for these students and click stop. Now you can see that audio file is embedded on the page and it's selected for audio learners. Click next and we'll put that into their homework section and choose distribute. Now if I switch down to Ella here and I choose homework, you're gonna see she has the tree frogs habitat and there's that audio file that I distributed into her homework section. The seventh tip is distributing a section group. So if I go to the class notebook toolbar here and choose distribute new section, I'll choose new section group. A section group lets me put more structure, basically folders full of sections inside each student's notebook really quickly. Oftentimes people might do a unit. So here's unit one and we'll give it a couple of sections here. Readings, I'll click another section, research, and I could delete those if I wanted, but we'll just leave it right here and click distribute. Now that pushes out that unit one with the sections nested inside. And if I wanted to make unit two, we'll do that really quick. And this one will have a journal in it and I'll hit distribute. Okay, now we'll go and look inside of those student sections and see how it looks. We'll open up Alex and Ella and there's unit one and unit two and unit one and unit two. And you can see that structure that I just pushed out is inside of Alex and down here for unit one and unit two, it's also for Ella. The eighth tip is to distribute a section inside of an existing section group. This is a tip that not everyone knows is there. So we'll go to distribute a new section, choose this distribute new section. And because we already have section groups like unit one and unit two, you'll see this location details. And if I open this up, it lets me choose. Maybe I wanna push out a new section and this one will be called labs. And we're gonna push that into the unit one section group and we'll click distribute. Okay, we're all done. Now, if you look over here, you'll see under unit one for Alex, there's a new lab section. And for Ella, there's a labs section. So this is a way to push out a section that is nested inside of a section group. The ninth tip is deleting a page that you've already distributed. It might've been accidental and you wanna recall that page and not go delete each one individually from those students. So maybe I have this meaning of amphibian, I will distribute it as an educator here. That will go into handouts and we'll click distribute. Okay, it's completed. And all of a sudden I realize, oh no, I didn't wanna distribute that page, I wanna delete that out of each of those student sections. So I go to distribute page again and there's this delete page. So bulk delete, choose that and go over back to handouts. That's where I pushed it out to and click next. And there's that meaning of amphibian page. I wanna blast that out so I select it and I'll click next. Now we really wanna make sure that you know what you're doing because if it was a week later and you're trying to delete this page, students may have already typed or written on it and you don't wanna delete student work. So this is best to do if you just made a mistake and you wanna recall it. So one page will be permanently deleted from five student notebooks. Okay, click delete. Are you really sure? Yes, I am. So here's my status. Now it's all done. We'll close this and now we're gonna go into the student and just make sure that that page is gone. Okay, let's open up Alex and go to his handout section and it's empty, there's nothing there. That page has successfully been blasted. The 10th tip is a sneaky way to distribute a page from a non-class notebook. Typically distributing pages only works if you're in a class notebook, but maybe you have a master curriculum notebook and you wanna distribute a page right from there instead of having to copy it over to your class notebook and then distribute it. Here's the tip. I'll switch to my master curriculum notebook and here's a problem of the week. Let's say I wanna distribute that into my science notebook. Go to distribute page and choose cross notebook distribution. Now here are all the notebooks, choose science notebook and click next. And here are the different sections. We're gonna put that into the homework area and click distribute. And there it finished. So now if I go back into my science notebook and we'll go down and look inside of the homework folder, there's the problem of the week that I pushed out. So that's a nice tip to be able to distribute a page from a non-class notebook using cross notebook distribution. The 11th tip is setting defaults for channels, either in the collaboration space or content library. So I'm gonna create three channels really quick. Now when I go to a notes section in a channel, 
you'll see that content added here will live in your class notebooks collaboration space. So each channel will create a section in the collaboration space so the students can work on group projects together. I'll click start collaborating. Now I'll show what that looks like in the class notebook. So I go full screen, we'll open up notes here and the collaboration space. You'll see these three different sections, project yellow notes, project blue notes, and green notes have all been created automatically. But what if I wanna change that so every channel I create puts these into the content library as read only? We call this the Dr. Kellman feature. He wants to be able to teach with his channels and put all the notes in those channels by unit. So I go to the class notebook tab here, I click on manage notebooks, and you'll see default location for notes tabs in channels. I'll choose content library. That means the students can only view the content, they cannot change it or collaborate. Click close. I'll create three new channels really quick, units one, two, and three, and we'll show how that's read only now. Here's my three channels, and if I go to the notes tab here, you'll see now it says content added here will live in your class notebooks content library, and I'll let start it. So maybe this is lecture notes, and I can add all my notes here, it's going to be read only for the students. Now I'm gonna show what that looks like inside of the class notebook. Here's the class notebook, we'll go full screen, open this up, now look at the content library. Here's unit one notes, unit two notes, and unit three notes. Notice they're in the content library now, and these are all read only. So I can put all my lecture notes in here, and no one will be able to edit them. If you wanna change the defaults back, you go back into manage notebooks and choose the other option. The 12th tip is creating an assignment from a OneNote class notebook page. Let's go here in assignments and click create and then assignment, give it a name, instructions, add resources. Now you'll see class notebook here. Choose this, now your content library, and here's the section, Japanese tree frog. And we'll choose life cycle of tree frog and click attach. Then we'll choose what section does it go into. You can see the unit one and unit two section groups that we added earlier are here, but we'll keep this simple and push it into homework and click done. This will be worth 10 points. Now what's great is I could add a rubric here. Many people have always wanted rubrics with their class notebook pages. You could do that here. And we'll just put it in the science class. We'll make the due date on Friday. Now click assign. Now this page gets assigned to the students in the class. I'll briefly show Alex the student filling it out. I'm signed in as Alex the student and here is my assignment, the Japanese tree frog. I'm gonna open that up. And here's that one note page that is attached and this lives in my class notebook. We'll open this. Okay, and Alex will just fill out his assignment really quick. Okay, Alex is all done. And I just click turn in just like I normally would. Now we'll switch back to Kara and show how she grades this OneNote page assignment. Okay, it looks like one person has turned this in. Let's open up the assignment as Kara the educator and it looks like Alex turned in. Let's click this to open in speed grader. And here's Alex's assignment. Now because Kara is grading in the speed grader, first she can say something like, you know, great job but also Kara can give all sorts of feedback. So Kara can do some writing on the page if she needs to. You can draw over here, type. She can even give stickers. Let's give our favorite the roller skating unicorn. So all of that is available and then I just give my points right here and I click return. And with the speed grader, I can easily move on to the next student. The 13th tip is an easy way to find all of your class notebooks. This is for a teacher or a student. So I'm gonna click on OneNote here from the office.com homepage. And right here, there's a bunch of notebooks and you'll see class notebooks. If I click here, this pulls up all the class notebooks that I'm part of. If I'm a student, it would look exactly the same and I could have this class notebooks tab. The 14th tip is using your content library as a whiteboard for real-time lectures. So if I'm an educator here, I'm in my content library and let's say that I'm presenting this to the class and they can all see this in real time. So for example, if I wanna go full screen here, I have this entire page and you can see with the one note zoom in, zoom out, but everyone can see what I'm doing in real time. So for example, if I wanna put a ruler out here and I wanna draw a line, I can just do that really easily. And so people get those updates in real time. And if I wanna switch out, I can do that. So if I go back here, and then maybe I'm going down here and I'm still talking and lecturing in class, I can easily go and add things. So people are seeing my screen, and as I'm writing, they are receiving those updates in real time. Now what the benefit is, all these are stored inside of OneNote and organized. So every single lecture that I've done is captured here. It goes offline, I can look at it later. 
In addition, maybe little Alex is going to be taking notes while I'm in class. And so I've got a lecture page here and I can be taking notes on my own personal notebook while the educator is lecturing and all those notes on their whiteboard are coming through in real time and being saved in my content library. The 15th tip is sorting by last name versus first name. So from the class notebook toolbar, if I'm going to review student work here, we'll choose review student work and we'll choose the section and the page. And here's the page. Hit next. Right here, first name versus last name. Some people like to have last name first, but if you want to reverse those, I click this and it switches to first name sorting. And I can go back and forth really easily. The 16th tip is embedding content and then distributing to your class. So I'm going to embed a YouTube video here. So I've pasted a YouTube link here, and this is a video that is a YouTube video that is now interactive. Hi, I'm Abby, a principal. Now you can embed all sorts of things into OneNote. It's not just YouTube videos. If your school disables YouTube videos, you can embed forms, you can embed Sway, you can embed GeoGebra, Desmos, and many, many other types of apps. The link is in the description as well as on the screen to explore all the different types of content to embed. So I have my video here that I'm gonna distribute and I will go to the class notebook tab, choose distribute page right here, and we'll put that to handouts and hit distribute. It's all done. And just to show what that looks like, if I go to handouts, there is that embedded content page in Ella's little section as well as all the other sections in here. The 17th tip is saving a copy of your class notebook. We call this the end of the year scenario for students. So here's my science notebook. If I click the dot, dot, dot menu, you're going to see save a copy. Now, when I choose this, it's going to ask me which type of account do I want, but this will allow me to save an entire copy of my class notebook to a Microsoft account or another Office 365 account if I'm changing schools. So we'll choose save a copy. You can see here, save to your work or school account or save to a Microsoft account. So maybe I'm graduating and I wanna save this out to a Microsoft account. Let's choose that one. We'll sign in and then choose copy notebook. Okay, it's gonna copy the science notebook over to my OneDrive in my Hotmail account. Choose got it. Here I am signed into my Hotmail account and here is my science notebook right here. Let's open it up and look at this. Here's my own stuff from Alex and then the content library and anything in the collaboration space. So the class notebook, including my own materials, are all saved off to my own Hotmail or Outlook account, depending on which one you use. The 18th and final tip is a really sneaky one, but it's super cool in the collaboration space. If you've made it this far in the video, you deserve this tip. Now this only works in OneNote Desktop or OneNote 2016. I'm in the collaboration space and I'll create a new page. Now to start out, I'm gonna paste a list of my students student one through 25. And I wanna have every student in the class have their own page for the collaboration space. So I'm gonna select all the students, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna choose link to pages and watch this. It creates 25 pages that are all linked automatically to each of these. We call this wiki creation. So you can say, hey, find your name, you know, student one, go to your page and fill out whatever you want. And you can have all the students fill out all this content all at the same time. So a nice way to create 25 pages in a single click. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post. My one and only one note, my one and only one.